May 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Romans chapter 7 from the New Testament. Or do you not know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is Lord over a person as long as he lives? For a married woman is bound by law to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is released from the law of the marriage. So then, if she is joined to another man while her husband is alive, she will be called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, and if she is joined to another man, she is not an adulteress. So my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you could be joined to another, to the one who was raised from the dead, to bear fruit to God. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful desires, aroused by the law, were active in the members of our body to bear fruit for death. But now we have been released from the law, because we have died to what controlled us, so that we may serve in the new life of the Spirit, and not under the old written code. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Absolutely not. Certainly I would not have known sin except through the law. For indeed, I would not have known what it means to desire something belonging to someone else if the law had not said, Do not covet. But sin, seizing the opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of wrong desires. For apart from the law, sin is dead. And I was once alive apart from the law. But with the coming of the commandment, sin became alive, and I died. So I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life brought death. For sin, seizing the opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it I died. So then the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. Did that which is good then become death to me? Absolutely not. But sin, so that it would be shown to be sin, produced death in me through what is good, so that through the commandment sin would become utterly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold into slavery to sin. For I don't understand what I am doing, for I do not do what I want, instead I do what I hate. But if I do what I don't want, I agree that the law is good. But now it is no longer me doing it, but sin that lives in me. For I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my flesh. For I want to do the good but I cannot do it, for I do not do the good I want, but I do the very evil I do not want. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer me doing it, but sin that lives in me. So I find the law that when I want to do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see a different law in my members waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that is in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. God, we are just spoiled, selfish children. <laughs> It just keeps coming all back to us and what we want. You know, Paul talks about um, back in, what is it, verse 7 ish. Um, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? Absolutely not. Certainly, I would not have known sin except through the law. So, as soon as the laws were written, we suddenly knew what we couldn't have, almost <laughs> back to the Garden of Eden. And just like little kids, now suddenly we want to have what we've we've been told that we can't have even though through that through your son Jesus Christ through everything that you set up for us there is freedom we constantly want to enslave ourselves by our own selfish desires it's as though I guess like a young child by getting what we want or by breaking laws we are showing our independence um, of what we can have and it was, it was so funny as I was recording this that, that there was a post that came across over on Twitter, a tweet that came over on Twitter um, from P 
pastor Tripp that says the purpose of the cross is to completely decimate loyalty to the most seductive of all idols, the idol of self. And we just keep going back to the selfishness uh, that happened in the Garden of Eden, that all of our sin comes from. We want things, and even when we become Christians, even when you give us new hearts and new lives, we we still seem to want what we don't want and, and hate what we shouldn't hate. All of that stuff that Paul was talking about. But humorously enough, enough right after that, Pastor Rick Warren uh, wrote on Facebook, all at the same time, everybody's thinking about this all at the same time. Uh, so much stress is due to our refusing to repent of attitudes and actions we don't want to let go. Pride causes a lot of pain. You gave us all of the guidelines and rules and the law for helping us have this amazing life. A life that glorifies you. A life lived in joy and peace and love. And instead we just want to be slaves to our own selfishness. We want to be locked up in jail with our independence. You give us so much freedom, God. And yet we just want to act like two-year-olds who want our way, even if it's not good for us. <laughs> God, you created this amazing and perfect opportunity for us to draw closer to you, to work on having this perfect life of peace and joy and love. And yet we are so not perfect. We continue to seek sin after sin after sin, constantly not wanting to, especially with our new heart. There are days where I get so frustrated at being a human being. Well, you know, we have those conversations on those days where it seems like there's like nothing I can do to stay away from sin, yet I know I'm responsible for the sins I choose to do. So God, I thank you for giving us another day to work on our relationship with you, another day to repent of our sins, another day to repent of our selfishness, and our desire to throw away the freedoms that you are so lovingly offering us and want to stay in a jail of our own independence. In your son's name I pray. Amen.